What is happening there, citizens of the Reject Nation? Thank you so much for clicking on this video. We're going to watch the menu for the first time today. John, how are you? I am hungry for some cinema, G. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You know what's on the menu today? Like buttons. Leave a like. That would be very much appreciated. Also, full-length reaction watch-alongs where you sync up with your own copy of the menu. Available for our Super Sexy Rejects over at our Patreon page. Over there, we cover several shows exclusively with reaction highlights and watch-alongs included. I've heard only good things about this movie and nothing specific. I think I saw a trailer for this months ago in the theaters. Can't tell you what I what I remember from it. Ray Fiennes is in it. It's, all, it's about all I know. <laughs> yep, yep, same. Let's get to it, guys. Hey. Please don't smoke, it'll kill your palate. Tonight is huge, okay? The flavor profiles, it's all super delicate. When you smoke, you ruin your ability to be able to appreciate <laughs> Come on. them. Please. Food oh, is uh, art. I, I get where he's getting, coming from, actually. You deserve it. Are you always gonna love this? Betty, it's just a uh, fuck. Wow, we are right off to the races. Okay. Who is Lillian Bush? Just food critic for Savoir? Okay, well, it's official. Tonight will be madness. <laughs> <laughs> You're not geeking out enough. Please make yourselves comfortable for our short journey to Hawthorne Island. Thank oh, you. Ahoy! And I've asked me heart, she's hope she see you where the A. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> yeah. Boat. Boat jokes. Yeah, yeah. Boat, yeah, we're yeah. on a boat. That's we're on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Sloak would like to welcome you with a raw local oyster and a mignonette emulsion. It's one of his classics. Mm -hmm. Lemon pearls are made with alginate. Alginate as in, um... As in algae. <laughs> Come on. You seem insufferable, Nicholas Holt. <laughs> <laughs> I relate to this guy. <laughs> it's the balance of the products. You need the mouthfeel of the mignonette. Please don't say mouthfeel. Too late. Mouthfeel. <laughs> mouthfeel, mouthfeel, mouthfeel. <laughs> mouthfeel, mouthfeel, mouthfeel. <laughs> moist, moist, moist. <laughs> And now Glass I onion. was about to say we embarked <laughs> on the Galeos <laughs> onion. <laughs> Welcome to Hawthorne, Mr. Ledford and Miss Westerville. Sorry, yeah, no, that was uh, the, it's not Miss What the change, change of plans. Ouch. This is Miss. I'm Marco. Oh, awkward. You could have handled it differently, man. Yeah, a million different ways. <laughs> Like, what are you working on now? Oh, hey, thanks for asking. See, people still know me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to wish the paparazzi was here. Each day starts at six with five hours of prep work. We harvest, we ferment, we slaughter, we marinate, we liquefy, we spherify, we gel. We gel. Yeah. We gel. Listen up, Margo. Uh, who lives there? No so. Chef. Oh, can we see that? Even we are not allowed inside Chef's Cottage, Mr. Ledford. Oh, but we will go there. Surprised by how immediate this movie is. Miss Mills. Miss Mills, you will be sitting in Miss Westervelt's seat. <laughs> 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 Never going to let you live that down. Enjoy. Just remember who's seated. Oh, God, this is awkward. Please do not photograph our dishes. Chef strongly feels that the beauty in his creations lies in their ephemeral nature. In the mouth feel. <laughs> do you make that with a Paco jet? Exactly right, sir. Yes. You know, a Paco jet can produce a powderized uh, snow-like texture. Cool. cool. <laughs> there he is. Such a realistic way to introduce him. Me? Is he looking at me? No, he's looking at not Miss Westervelt. I have to change the whole menu. We have a compressed and pickled cucumber melon, milk snow, and charred lace. <laughs> Thank you, Food Network. Can you taste a little goat? Right at the end, a little kid. She said milk. First, I would like to say thank you for the last two years. This opportunity have. Oh, dude. Well, at least we have work. And money. Work. <laughs> work and money. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. We're pathetic, aren't we? Yeah, money. Work. Woo. 
alphas. The grind. So what is it with this food thing? I don't know. It's like, you know how people idolize you know, athletes and musicians and painters and stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those people are idiots. <laughs> Watched him explain the exact moment the green strawberry is perfectly unripe. I've watched him play a raw scallop during its last dying contraction. The muscle, it's art on the edge of the abyss, which is where God works, too. It's the same. That was beautifully put, Tyler. Yeah, that was wonderfully put. Oh, I'm being no. serious. I think I'm um, starting to get it. Really? Yeah, really? A little. Yeah. <laughs> a very little. <laughs> Serve human flesh. Oh, I just, nothing seems like it's off the table. Okay. Yes, chef. Yes. I just don't think I could eat comfortably at a place like this. It's not about comfort. It's about art and life and death and sacrifice. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Julian Slowick, and tonight it'll be our pleasure to feed you. Hey. I have to beg of you one thing. It's just one. Do not eat. <laughs> Savor. Relish. Consider every morsel that you place inside your mouth. Be mindful. <laughs> but do not eat. Our menu is too precious for that. It's too much mouthfeel. They, they must know more about everybody than le they let on. I care more about quantity and eating <laughs> until my stomach tells me you've had enough. What happens inside this room is meaningless compared to what happens outside, in nature, in the soil, and the water. <laughs> That's her, like, ball. <laughs> yeah, I know. Enjoy. That's a cherry thought. <laughs> he is crying. I find it all very moving. It's all so beautiful. I just, it's almost too beautiful to eat. Stop taking Dude. photos. Thoughts? Because I'm... Really feeling this is quite... It's half great. It's there in moments. There in moments. <laughs> Flavors are there. It's very clean. It's very, um, thalassic. Thalassic? Oceanic. Thalassa was the primeval spirit oh, of the Thalassa and Pontos. Yes, 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 so... yes. Yeah, you dumbass. Yeah, you <laughs> idiot. You like this? The outer food? Yeah. Yeah, it's solid. I mean, I've had shellfish just as good with my chef at home, Ricardo. You know, mm. Ricardo, he's amazing. Mm. Incredible. Uh, my God, you guys are all getting targets on your back. <laughs> what is her deal? Bread has existed in some form for over 12,000 years. Peasants dipped their stale, measly bread and wine for breakfast. Ooh. Jesus teach us to pray, if not to beg, for beg our daily bread. bread. <laughs> Overachiever. But you, my dear guests, are not the common man. And so tonight, you get no bread. Ooh. What? I love bread. Yeah, what, what gives? Half the reason I go to Cheesecake Factory <laughs> is for their bread. Bottomless, no bread. But this emulsion does look slightly split. Oh, golly. I mean, I was going to say. Cut his head off. Yep. Serve them as the next course. In a restaurant of this quality. There it is. Well, there it is. Yeah. Oh, God. I mean, it's next level it? badassery. <laughs> he's not just a chef. He's a he's a storyteller. And he doesn't give a f about the rules. Call me the girl next door, but maybe there are some rules that you should give a f about. Like, I don't know, giving food to people at a restaurant. Dearest, no one would ever call you the girl next door. Yeah, Nicholas Holtz. Has now morphed into my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, just love his positive attitude about it all. Miss Bloom, mm -hmm. here is another broken emotion. Whoa. Ooh. You've been singled out. You talk a little loud. Um, I mean, look, the food's great, and we totally get all the conceptual stuff, but could we please get a little bread, you know, and some gluten-free for my friend as well? No. Yikes. I know who you are. Mm -hmm. Influencer? You know, we work with Doug Varick, right? Flip us a little bread. Please. We won't tell a soul, lady. Yeah, I promise, okay? No. <laughs> Magic conch. You will eat less than you desire and more than you deserve. Oh, damn. Without the bread, it, it really focuses you. It's so 
got to embalm me in this. See, he gets it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Star pupil. You haven't touched your food. There is no food. Yikes! <laughs> Don't want to fill up. That would not be possible. I've precisely designed the portions to account for that, so you won't fill up. The menu only makes sense if you eat. But you told us not to eat. That is not what I meant, madam. You know it. Yeah. Well, thank you for your concern, but I am perfectly capable of deciding when I eat and what. You're embarrassing him, Mario. <sighs> In front of the patriarchy. Christ, that was humiliating. Humiliating? Yeah. Tyler, the guy's a prick. Oh! oh too loud! Oh. This whole situation's just awkward. Yep. Mother. Next course is called memory, and that is what it's meant to evoke. So let me tell you a memory of mine. When I was growing up, a child in Waterloo, Iowa, Tuesday was taco night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> taco Tuesday. <laughs> this is my mother. Hey. When I was seven years old, one Tuesday, my father came home quite drunk. My mother grew angry and screamed at him, at which point he proceeded to wrap a telephone cord around her neck and pull it tight. What is this story? He's going to serve the telephone cord. I finally had to stab him in the thigh with kitchen scissors. <laughs> this is a macabre meal. I hope everyone gets to remember some traumatic memories right now. <laughs> House smoked breast chicken thigh, al pastor, and our own tortillas made with heirloom mast. The images on the tortillas have been made using a laser engraving machine. It's the first time we've used it. Oh no, oh no. Are they like personal memories printed on the tortillas? It sounds like it. The restaurants that I reviewed that all closed. Oh. They're like a gag then. It's like Chef Jigsaw. It's a very emotional dinner. Very personalized me. Oh, that's why Margo's throwing the whole thing off. Mm -hmm. Tyler, is that you? Yeah, they're on me from tonight taking <laughs> photos. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Sunshine, dumb part, bad script. Fun shoot, though. Wait, um, guys, what the f Whoa. Ew. What the hell are these? These are tortillas. <laughs> These are tortillas, <laughs> which contain Echo Bright's tax records and other documents showing how your company has created invoices with fake charges. Whoa. Who is that woman? Uh-oh. Damn it. I was hoping it wouldn't be. It's faked. It's some sort of, sort of stupid joke. It's taco, okay? Can't hurt you. Yeah, and taco that might hold up in court. So we eat the evidence. Hey, I have to make this right somehow. I have to. Well, I'll tell you how you make it right. You send the ship back. Excuse me. Excuse me, hey, sir. Marga. Hi. Marga. Oh, he snapped. Oh, Ouch. don't snap. No, and I don't really you care. Do not send shit back to this kitchen, you child. Oh, child. This is incredible. You have to try this. No, thanks. Don't let me interrupt. Damn, that was cold, dude. Oh, boy. <laughs> the cigarette is ruining the taste. You've barely eaten the food. Why? Why do you care? I take my work very seriously and you're not eating. And that wounds me. Maybe he puts his cigarette out. Is that a mess? Nah, blow smoke in his face. Who are you? I am Margo. You shouldn't be here tonight. Please get the f*** out of my way. Yikes. We're trying to save you. It's like the one audience member in your stand-up crowd who's not laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy created the next dish. It's called The Mess. He's good. He's very good. Good enough. But he's not great. God. Do you like this life? This life that you dreamed about? No, Chef. Mm -hmm. And do you want my life? Wow. No, Chef. Well, this is just another day for Greg and John. <laughs> yep. This is how we start out John, before we shoot. John, do you want my life? <laughs> oh, Greg. <laughs> Jeremy's the mess. Holy, he's cleft. Wow! Wow! 
<laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Damn, I did not see that coming. Well, I was a shock. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> This is an exclusive experience, please. Just what the man? Turn your head. Thank you so much. How was it? And now they're going to wrap him up and roast him in that. They're going to put him in a giant smoker or something. Stagecraft. This, is it this really? is what he, yeah, this is what he does. It's part of the menu. Enjoy your femur bone. Questioning what's in that, huh? Oh, R.I.P. Jeremy. <laughs> I want a refund. <laughs> there is no boat to leave on. Then I'll call a helicopter. That would be very difficult without phone service. Do what they say. No, God I can. Take I can I'll, I'll handle this. Just, just. With which hand will you handle this, left or right? Oh no. Oh Christ! Say you're gonna cut off your hand. Choose what? Very well, left hand. Ring finger. Oh my. Come out. No. Oh, oh my. Come on. What are you oh, doing? Leave me. Come on. Do it. Come on. <laughs> Please hold still. <laughs> Straight to the point. <laughs> Please sit. <laughs> Not funny, lady. Jesus Christ. It's all part of the menu. Okay. I honestly think that this whole thing is just for our benefit. I mean, <laughs> oh. that's why he texted me. Ugh. <laughs> Chef Slowick would like to see you in the kitchen. Can I come too? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Can I come too? This menu, this guest list, this entire evening has been painstakingly planned, and you were not a part of that plan. And it's spoiling everything. Is it now? Proceed, I have to know where to seat you. With us, or with them. Oh. And then you'll let me live? That you live? No. We're all gonna die tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Is, do you want to die with those who give or with those who take? Please pick. Die a giver. In 15 minutes, I'll take a break between courses, and that is how long you have to decide. Die a giver. I mean, you wouldn't know how to cook, though. Oh my god, what if Nicholas Holt's like, Yeah, I know we're gonna die. Yeah, that's why he's the whole reason I signed up. To be fair, why do you get a kitchen course? Smoke all day, can't even taste it. Ugh. Why don't we just start the kitchen, okay? You think we have better knife skills than them? What other choice do we have? I'm gonna break this window. Oh, oh boy. No, you're not. I mean, I would first try to take out the guards and stuff, right? Please let me help you back to your table. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, you can always go back to your Comedy Central show. Any questions? <clears throat> Is this bergamot I'm getting, Chef? Yes, it is. <laughs> so not interested. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> we we want to know. What the f is this happening, man? Well, I'll tell you. Think of yourselves as ingredients in a degustation concept. Miss Bloom knows the damage she has done to so many livelihoods. No, 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 no. no. Ha hang on. Chef. No, no, no. No, you don't talk. <laughs> How many times have you eaten here in the last five years? Eleven times. Mr. Liebrand, kindly name one dish you ate the last time you were here. Oh my god. Tell me one dish you ate the last time you were here. Or the time before. Not bread. Cod. Cod? It wasn't cod, you donkey. <laughs> I've allowed my work to reach the price point where only the class of people in this room can access it. and I've been fooled in trying to satisfy people who can never be satisfied. But that's our culture, isn't it? And my restaurant is part of the problem. Uh. I would have to say that Doug Verrick owns me, except now things are a little more complicated and I own Doug Verrick. Oh, oh, oh that's what was damn. going on. 
Oh my. When he questioned my menu, he would even request substitutions, despite the fact that there are no substitutions at Hawthorne! Fallen Angel, please. Oh. It's <laughs> cruel. Do you hear? Do you hear it? Do you hear that silence? Listen, can you hear it? <laughs> and it's handy on every word. <laughs> you thought I couldn't tell? Oh, I know a fellow service industry worker when I see one. Mr. Liebrand. How do you know him? You've been eyeing him all evening. Well, I think you know. Oh, no. What rattled me is that he told me to tell him that he was a good man and that I was his daughter <gasps> and that he loved me and I loved him. So and... he's a romantic. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Do you enjoy providing your services? Do you enjoy providing yours? I haven't desired to cook for someone in ages. And one does miss that feeling. Oh, they're connecting. Cook for Margot. The next course, let us take the evening air. Come on, outside. We should create some type of immersive experience out of this. Yeah, that wouldn't go wrong in any way, shape, or form. Don't be frightened. Nothing to be frightened of. So maybe there's a spare bull somewhere we can get out of here. To what? Bro. Dead. It's okay. No, we're gonna die today. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Such a yes man. <laughs> Julian Slowick tried to f me. I refused. He kept me in his kitchen and refused to look me in the eye, speak directly to me for eight months. Cold. And Our next course is called Man's Folly. <laughs> oh. Oh. And we will be serving oh sausage and eggs. God. Oh. I mean, he's like, what? <laughs> to our male diners, we now offer you the chance to escape. You'll be given a 45 second head start, at which point members of my staff will try and catch you. If they do catch you. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it. What? Hold this. <laughs> what a wonderful critic. I'll, I'll send for help first thing. Not such a beast after all, Nicholas Holt. I have no clue where this is going. Nope. <laughs> Even Chef is not. Morally superior. Go. It is the most dangerous game. This is fantastic. The tartness of the umeboshi and the, the waves of ferment. It's, it's rich and yet it's clean. It's delicious. Kiss ass. Mm. Better. It's mm. so good. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Let's go. You know my husband. Ah. Yep. Ugh. <laughs> ah, ah, ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work if you live. No, what doesn't work? The menu. I mean, really, you should have your own place. Right, mm -hmm. and I could help you with that. Clever. Oh, everyone dying was my pitch, actually. Oh, God. <laughs> Anybody want any wine? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh! oh. <laughs> I definitely keep your voices down. Fuck! Let's go to the chef's cottage. <laughs> oh, not by a window. Come on. A special bite for the last guest to be caught. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what did you do out there? I'm the only one who got away. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a failure. It's okay. I've been stealing money from you. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. I'm afraid our menu cannot continue as planned until we deal with an unresolved matter. It's got bread. Tell me why you're here. I wanted to experience your food, Chef. What were you told ahead of time? be the greatest menu ever created. Right, and, and? That everyone would die. Oh my God, you what? asshole. <laughs> you brought Margo. That's uh, just because you don't offer scenes for one. So you hired her knowing she'd die. Wow. 
Yes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> You're a cook. <laughs> Crooks belong in the kitchen. Come with me. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I have something for you. No, 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 no. Psychopath. Nope. Tyler, now cook. Cook. I don't. Cook. Cook, cook Tyler. Jesus, man. Damn it, man. Sh- shallots. Shallots for the great foodie, <clears throat> the phenomenal Mr. Food <clears throat> himself. Oh. Everyone gather around. We must learn from <laughs> Tyler. This is a, a new, uh, a new dice. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> Much as I hate you, poor guy. I bear witness to a revolution in cuisine. Would you like the protein? Uh, yeah, I'll have. <laughs> oh no, my god, dude, so, dude. No. You're missing all the basics. Gradual, man. He's gonna like burn himself or something. Must be like son of rich parents or some shit, huh? It's actually quite. Bad. <sighs> Tyler, <laughs> just bullshit. <laughs> Inedible skin. You are why the mystery has been drained from our art. Go climb in the oven, Tyler. Dessert requires a large barrel that is supposed to be there in the corner. Margo, you will fetch the barrel instead. Give her the smokehouse key. Yes, chef. Elsa, Elsa, Elsa. You had one job to die. I just don't think it's really fair. Do you want to know why you're being punished? I saw the film calling Dr. Sunshine. I did not enjoy it. I didn't direct it, I just acted in it. The memory of your face in that film Oh, God. <laughs> and what about her? What school did you go to? Brown. Student loans? No. I'm sorry, you're dying. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> wow. That's cool. It's a replica. No one is allowed inside Chef's house. Do you think you're special? Oh, you should have the knife there. Uh, trust me, I have no idea. <laughs> you have all kinds of items there. Yep, get a pan. <laughs> Pot coaching. He didn't tell me Don't. about the barrel. I didn't forget. <laughs> oh, jeez. You have a chance to survive. Come on, Aaron? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. yep, yep. Nope. Hello. Happy birthday. Oh, jeez. You cool. told him it was my birthday? Seemed funny about three hours ago. Thank you. <laughs> As Dr. King said, we know through painful experience that freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. Did he just quote Martin Luther King? Yep. Yes, he did. Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> Clear the dining room immediately. Did you call someone? Why would you return? They planned for this. Ask yourselves two things. One, if you really want to be responsible for the death of an innocent man. And two, ask yourselves this entire evening. Why didn't you all try harder to fight back? <laughs> ha! You could have fought all them. Did anybody here call in a distress over the shortwave tonight? Notice the injured guy. Uh, are you? Yes, 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 I, I am. Oh, wow. I, I'm a big fan. Thank you. 
Would you like his autograph? I don't want to bother you. Oh, no, no. no. Help me. <laughs> Just don't say you love that movie that the chef hates. My wife and I, we love that. Album. Oh, what's it called? The one where uh, you play the surgeon. Yeah. Call him Dr. Sunshine. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. <laughs> don't react to the note. Well, thank you for your service. Hands on your head, oh. everyone. Oh. My God. What's coming from behind the window? On your knees with your hands over your head now. Yeah. <laughs> All these other fuckers are with him too, sir. Watch out. Oh, you. <laughs> yeah, now. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Hey, 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 don't have nothing to do with him. No. Damn it. Wow. Oh. Damn it. No. <laughs> Thank you, Dale. Thank you. Oh. oh, you gotta be shitting me. So in a kitchen, we all work together, and nothing works at all. <laughs> you've betrayed our sacred bond of trust, and you've shown your craft to be careless. Oh my god, cut his throat. Final course, plating in five. Yes, sir! Sure, you all of you. Take some of them, right? If they like really band together, use some of the objects around you. I don't like your food, and I would like to send it back. <laughs> Every dish you've served tonight has been some intellectual exercise rather than something you want to sit and enjoy. True, true. It tastes like it was made with no love. Oh, this is ridiculous. We always cook with love, don't we? No, sir! <laughs> I thought tonight was a night of hard home truths. This is one of them you cook with obsession, not love. Ah, uh, yeah, way to go. Your single purpose on this earth is to serve people food that they might actually like, and you have failed. Mm. You failed, and you've bored me. And the worst part is, I'm still hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Twisted knife. <laughs> you know what I'd really like? Tell me. A burger. A cheeseburger. Nah, me. No, we can do a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like it? Medium. American cheese. Because it melts without splitting. How much will that set me back? Nine ninety-five. Yeah. <laughs> you get crinkle cut, julienne, curly fries, every oh kind of god. fries. Oh my god, it's gonna bring him back to the love. <laughs> yeah. He's making it himself. Come on, Carmi. Cook with passion. This is the most lovely cooking sequence, too. <laughs> Look how happy he looks. <laughs> Not a ruffly plate and all. Damn, them fries look good. I would have asked without onions. I'll take your onions, boy. <laughs> Give me all the onions. Mm. Now that is a cheeseburger. Unfortunately, I think my eyes were a little bigger than my stomach. <laughs> Don't push it. Can I get the rest to go? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Clever girl. <laughs> One moment, please. <gasps> <laughs> One cheeseburger to go and a gift bag. Thank you for dining at Hawthorne. Oh my God. Thank you for um, for a couple bucks. <laughs> you played well. <laughs> oh, enjoy while you still can. So once again, thank you for dining with us tonight. You represent the ruin of my art. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now you get to be a part of it. Part of what I hope is my masterpiece. 
Are they going to burn the place down? I hope so. <laughs> go. Yes. Just go ahead and roll around in those. Coat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Roasted marshmallows. Everyone's a s'more. <laughs> this is made of chocolate. <laughs> we must embrace the flame. Three days. <laughs> Cast iron hands. Like martyrs or heretics, we can be subsumed. I know. Thank you. <laughs> I love you all. We love you, Chef! <laughs> Even they're saying it. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's going to blow up. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be filled with graham crackers and marshmallows. <laughs> Customers, Customer, staff, staff, and restaurant. restaurant. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> nice. Well done. Ooh. She got away. Adam McKay and Will Ferrell's company produced this, huh? Damn. <laughs> Shit. I called that. Okay. That was a movie. That was. Oof. That was a, that was a satire if ever there was. The lower class wins, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. The lower class wins. They who, come out on top. Who needs Good old fashioned fancy cheeseburger airs. sex worker <laughs> gets to come out on top. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's right. Yeah. Woo. All you filthy, rich, disgusting pricks. <laughs> <laughs> With your fake high class sensibilities. Yeah, y'all go down in flames. Yeah. Y'all are a bunch of petty assholes. And the irony of s'mores. Poor people's uh, food. <laughs> yeah. That's you, what they call it. You should be so lucky as to let the poor eat you alive. That was uh, that was delicious. No pun intended. All that food looked not appetizing. I'm not gonna lie, I did not want to eat any of that. <laughs> there were maybe a couple. I had no f no flavor for it. I was like, I would never eat this. I don't know. I like quantity. Poor man's lifestyle. You want yeah? You want quantity of food. I want a, I want something cheap and a bunch of crap. Cheeseburger and flavor. Right? Fucking munch, and then uh, and his wait takes like 20 30 minutes for your stomach to tell you you're full, and then you just keep eating until that signal comes in, and you eat till you like hate life. That's the way to do it if you're gonna pay that much money for food, <laughs> all right? That's that's what I'm getting at with this. Yeah, 12 50 ahead or whatever. I was surprised by how uh quick and immediate it was. Uh, just normally with these horror films, it's like there's kind of it was, it was funnier than I expected it to be. I didn't I didn't know what the genre of film it was, but I would I would classify this as like a horror uh, dark horror comedy. I, I I feel like it's in really it's it's intentionally funny. It's like a, a lot pitch of it. black comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. funny. It was a really funny film. Absolutely. And I was surprised by how funny it was. Uh, I I thought it would be. Because, you know, it's reminding you of, like, a lot of the, like, you were trying to name off oh, yeah. Ready or Not ready earlier. Or not. All right. Yeah. Yeah, Ready or Not. I keep wanting to call it Hide and Seek, but yeah, Ready or Not. Nope. The Radio Silence nope. movie. Hide and Seek. <laughs> it's Robert De Niro. It's the best uh, Robert De Niro movie. It's uh, Ready or Not. Uh, there, are, there are flavors of all those kind of things. I thought I was going to go down a Your Next route. It was not a Your Next route. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, some kind of, like, bloody, all-out, like, survival thing. Yeah, yeah, I think Ready or Not is probably the more apt title, descriptor, 
for it. And then, of course, you got films in, uh, very recent, like Don't Worry Darling, to a certain extent. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> it's really uncomfortable dinner scene. <laughs> that take place uh, in this offshoot island. There's a, oh, I think there's a bunch of movies you can name. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that yeah, I mean, this, this is a type of movie. But it's a good cat and mouse type of game with Ray Fiennes and Anya Taylor-Joy. Uh, that I really enjoyed. I thought it was really fun. I like its political, social commentary, a classism. Uh, and it, it didn't feel like overtly, I mean, I would say it's pretty overt. It didn't feel overly bogged down by it. It, it seemed like the game was the front and center of the show. I, it didn't get lost in the commentary, especially because Ray finds his chef is is. is fucking insane <laughs> like sure. he, he's he's nuts so i'm never like listening to him going man's got a point he's got a good point <laughs> you know yeah and yeah. even <laughs> even in times where it, it threatens to push you out into that direction the movie does bring him down to either pettiness or some other self-serving end like i like the way that ray finds really strikes the balance of like this is truly a guy who believes that he is humbling himself and giving up his ego and yeah and making this grand example and yet there is still this sort of shriveled petty guy at the center of that and i like that this movie because he's lording he's he's the puppet master of this whole show this whole charade i like that the movie doesn't actually try to maintain that he is some kind of moral authority in this little bubble like it humanizes him too and i think that that helps I think it drastically helps. Yeah. Otherwise, it would have felt like the movie's preaching at sure. me, yeah. as if he's some type of social justice warrior. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, some kind of jigsaw type guy yeah. who's like he's doing it the wrong way, no, but he's but, got the right idea. <laughs> you know, like yeah. I mean, I, I think they managed to make with this chef character, Chef Slowick. Uh, they they managed to make the movie surprisingly character driven, even when you're not in his perspective. This whole thing is sort of from his perspective because you see that he comes from a troubled past, sounds like he came from a poor past, and then as he rose through the ranks and rose through the ladder, like he talks about how his business flourished where it now only caters to the definition of like the 0.5% out there yeah. and what has become of his art and what has become of him. And, and everything he's talking about is... The deterioration of of him and the reflection of that through the customers that he has mm -hmm. so it's not some type of to me i didn't read it as preachy even though the the film clearly has that imbued in there it doesn't feel like i'm being talked at because it's all sounding like this is all from the character of the chef and this is the world point of view that we have all gotten suckered into because of him and so it makes sense why someone like margo who or aaron whatever her name is you know seeing a i thought that was clever seeing the photo of what he was you know once a really happy guy who did it out of love and with Ploy the burgers the month, yeah. yeah that was clever and then to order for the burger and remind him of the love for that and then asking for the to go i'm like oh you brought back a nostalgic memory route and it got you out of here you clever Clever ass poor girl. You found a way to win the <laughs> yeah. unwinnable game. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it was. It was smart. It was. It was really smart. And I love the, the cult like manipulation of, uh, like it's the 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 restaurant represents uh, a, a sort of mindset of society. And I really like that a lot. <laughs> yeah. No. I was totally. surprised by this movie. It was funnier and faster than I expected. Some people I feel like might categorize this as a slow burn, but I don't think it was a slow. It was more like I don't know where it's going, but. You know, once you get to the like the the guy who um uh trying to watch my words here, <laughs> this this the sous chef, the sous chef, the sous chef, sous chef yeah. moment, the th 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 and then they're like, okay, all right, this, this is interesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I was I was yeah. into it of 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 like I, I like the horror movies where you're, you're like I don't know what's happening here, <laughs> you know, but I'm really into the fact that I could tell something bad's gonna go down, like like movies like The Invitation and shit like that where again isolated location and you know like murders around the corner mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? yeah yeah absolutely i thought this did nicely i think you, yeah like it's not overtly a cult thing but it is and i think that's part of the the fun of the genre and the commentary is the cult that forms around the chef both in the kitchen and outside of the kitchen and the cult that can grow around like you know 
people who just have opinions and authorities and are, you know, given platform enough to put them out there at will and, you know, pull the strings of other people's lives. Like, I, I liked... I liked what this made of itself and I liked the deliberate quality of it because I mean, yeah, it is. I almost like that. We don't have to open on some kind of like preliminary prologue sequence or something like that. It throws you in and it doesn't necessarily like, obviously Margo is the cipher, but she's not even like a hundred percent us, which I appreciate. Cause it, it, funny enough throughout this, I, I was often reminded of hide and seek. And I think what I liked ready or not ready or not <laughs> someday. I, like I, I like that movie, and I, and I heard a lot of people being like, "Oh man, like it's so sharp with the class commentary." But that was the movie that felt like it was kind of putting it in my face. Whereas this, I, I appreciated that it kind of just plops a bunch of characters together, and it gives you this structure and a power set, but also it kind of just lets you look at and draw your conclusions about anyone and everyone. And I love that certain things are the morality play, like the husband and wife, and like, oh, he's been seeing. It just so happens that the same prostitute he hired is here. Um, but then you have stuff like Jean Languizamo where it's just like, I went to your movie on my one day off, and I friggin' hated it. And two often Well, it was beyond that. It, 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 was, the, it was the fact your, that... Your passion the, is gone. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was like watching one of those actors. Yeah, and, and but even that, like I, I appreciate that even within that, there is a certain level of... There, there is a philosophy to it, but it is like a pettier thing on the hierarchy of concerns that are happening in this room. And I thought it added a lot of, it just added a lot of like human color that made all the characters feel very human, even though the situation is so heightened. And I thought that the way they stylized the characters was good because everyone's pretty distinct and there are certainly very dark comedic choices, but no one's playing too much of a big character. Like even Nicholas Holt who is, like, kind of the biggest joke the whole time because, like, far past the point, and it's it's justified because he knows technically about the deaths, although even in that scene, I'm like, does he know that it this really means they're going to die? Like, how much seriousness was stressed to this guy? But even with him, even the way that he is constantly just eating up this guy's words, far past the point where everyone else is like, this is messed up. You well, know? like, it's spoiled rich kid who never had to work for anything f um, from him. Sure. Like that's like the whole vibe. Yeah, <laughs> and an armchair expert who's never actually done the thing for yeah. real and never actually cared to, you know, put their not that you have to become a master of anything and everything you talk about, but at the same time it seems like to grant the true appreciation you would have to try. Well, yeah, and I think that's part of the commentary of the film is people yeah. feeling like they're never gonna be good enough no matter what heights they achieve. Mm -hmm. And I think the kitchen setting, you know, with Ray finds sort of being the image that, you know, we kind of associate for like a Gordon Ramsay. Sure. Where it is like a, it feels like a, whenever you see anything like that, it feels like a, a church. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like he is Lord. Yeah. And everything else is and like, it's is like prostrate before him. Yeah. That's what I hear of like what it's like being in a ballet school. You know, er everything is, it, it feels like a religion in a way. And, and, it, and it's a constant fear of discipline. Uh, of being disciplined and not rising to be good enough. And so I think using like the setting of that representing a lot of what's wrong with society and reflecting it with the separation of the rich is yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of cool things about it. It was and it's a tight setting. It was good acting throughout, man. I thought Nicholas Holt was a blast. Nicholas Holt was, so, was a blast. He, he was so fun. I thought John Leguizamo was really good too. I he thought was great. great. I thought he was excellent. Yeah. No, I, I mean John Leguizamo, like he's he's the best because he'll he'll show up in every kind of movie, but he's always really committed. Well, I like that he you know presents himself like he's the shit, but then he just slowly peels back that he's the furthest thing from being the shit. <laughs> yeah. He's just shitty. <laughs> he's, you know. Yeah. Totally. And I thought that was great. Um, and I liked seeing uh, Arturo Castro get such a kind of focal side character because I've been a fan of him since seeing his Comedy Central show. I never would have expected to see him in a place like this and I think he's comedy director. Sure, yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, there, there is, I mean, John Leguizamo has a good amount of comedy in his background too and you said Hong Chao is, is funny. Yes. Um, but yeah, like, I, I, I was just kind of charmed and pleasantly surprised by like, oh yeah, like, I, I buy this guy. Like, he's well cast, his, his comedic chops are well placed here. 
Um, but yeah, like the cast across the board, even even the actors whose faces I know and don't really like the critic and the magazine guy, like everybody was really distinct for the most part, even if you don't really get to know many of them beyond the types that they are. And uh, yeah, I just thought the, the construction of the menu was really well done and the way they intercut these like food and something higher grade than Food Network, but you know, like the the actual like, oh, it kind of looks like a cooking show now where you're doing an insert on the dish and it's explaining what it is. Like it had just enough flourish, but without feeling like too much of a fun house or like, you know, like we're having too much, like the style and the presentation of the movie is very restrained as to match the menu itself. Yeah, I felt like some parts in the the first like half hour with its editing was a little off to me. Mm-hmm. I, I might play differently on a on a second viewing, but I thought this first go around it was a it was a little. Uh, there are times where I was like I could do with a, a, a tad different pacing because I'm I'm just kind of keeping up with the amount of cutting we're doing <laughs> versus sinking into the mood mm-hmm. of it. And there's a, but it eventually got me. I was, I was like pretty much eyes glued to the screen for the whole time. I was really into it, but that's like a really small thing here. I didn't like, I really enjoyed everyone. And I, I wasn't, I wouldn't be, <laughs> to be honest, I wouldn't be bummed if any, like I wasn't bummed at the fact of all of them dying. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, not, yeah. like none of it. I was, when they said they're going to die, I'm like, oh good. And I hope they all die. <laughs> I, <laughs> I hope, much all I, hope die. I hope the movie goes there. I hope the movie lets them die. And I like that it didn't go down a generic route of Anya Taylor-Joy figuring out how to get everyone out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I thought that's where they might go. Yeah, yeah there's a, a big distinction that, that looms between her and everybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I just, what I found really unique was the was the interpretation and the execution of the chef character because mm-hmm. this is all, again, any other movie I feel like wouldn't have made it so character-based and why he's doing what he's doing but there is something that is so despairing about his portrayal and self-pitying at the same time you know and i i love that everything we're watching is because of this man's uh failure to enjoy success yes (laughs) (laughs) sure yeah and to to remain connected to his passions and his goals and why (laughs) yeah 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 it's like it's all he's lost sight of so much and they do touch on like almost everything, you know, with uh, the idea of servitude. Uh, they they comment a little bit on the Me Too movement as well. Yeah, sexual harassment. Um, you know, uh, the I, you know I saw Will Ferrell and Adam McKay produced it. I was like, oh, the whole thing with like corporate greed, and oh, scheming, yeah, and, and yeah, faked. Uh, yeah, the, all the t- the tortilla of faked uh, transaction records and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that they could have definitely gone down a, a more cliche path with every character, mm-hmm. but they didn't. You know, even the three bros, uh, I thought we were like, okay, here we go. This is what we're about to. The movie hates we're, these guys yeah, especially. We're go to three yeah. alpha males, but the the actors they chose, they I thought brought a lot of like it was it was in the scene with hong chow is refusing to give them bread which is a choice by the way that i loved yeah i loved that they didn't give them bread because it's beyond the fact that it's such a common association you know like with a restaurant like hey you get bread it's just that's just what you get but you know pulling it back with how this is what poor people survived off of and you're yeah. you're, you're supposed to be better than that right yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah but yeah. the fact that they still clamor for it when they have all these rich delights like they they're can entitled use. to it yeah as yeah. much as they and, want and as yeah. much as they need it they're still they, they lose sight of like what that bread actually kind of represents yeah. you know but there's also something to be said with like they don't really talk about it, but I feel like a lot of restaurants are like, you get so much bread, you get unlimited bread. <laughs> like yeah. it's kind of a greed filled plate it's of the bread. easy thing to <laughs> yeah. be like, give it. Yeah. And a lot of times it's like, you know, you get full before you even get the food <laughs> because you're just stocked up on so much bread. And I love that. I love that about restaurants. I hope they never change that. <laughs> you never Cheesecake go Factory, place. Olive Garden, almost every Italian restaurant. Mm-hmm. Bread, nonstop bread, free bread. It's the best. Dipping in oil and vinegar. I'm <laughs> craving it right now as I'm yeah, talking about it. Not even not, not what part of this food movie made me go, I want that. But except but, for the fries. But bread. <laughs> that oil and vinegar. It's delicious. Yeah. And I think, too, I mean. It's good music, too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Really like well good, done. Elegant, haunting music. 
And I mean, I like that. Yeah, I, I like the way it skewers the restaurant and cuisine just subset of of people, and the way even like Nicholas Holt at the beginning just like slags off every other kind of art as being useless. Um, but too, I've often heard it said that like you know any and all cooking movies to some degree can be sort of used as a also metaphor for filmmaking. And I wondered that's that's part of why I was wondering why the direct how many films or what kind of films this director had done prior because I, I have to I just have to feel like there is some element here of the struggle when it comes to really any kind of art form but I'm sure cinema because it is such a both because you can get very hoity-toity high class about something that is a more populist art form in general much like the bread and so you know uh, I think this is nice because this has a good array between its characters of like little microcosms of themery. Like there's the big overarching, like yeah, class, yeah, and uh, and you know commodification and all those things. But I think it's it does well in the life of its other characters and stuff to yeah have a tapestry that I think you could draw multiple threads out of rather than just one major one. And uh, I think that's just a nice sort of uh, earmark when you can do that with a movie like this. It's like it's good enough, I think, to have, you know, the sort of haves versus have nots ideology and, and exploration. But to, you know, then give it its own twist, depending on which of each of the characters, because like the mom isn't technically part of this set. She is just, you know, a, a, an aspect of Chef's life in a cycle of abuse that she was never able to break, which is a whole other thing, <laughs> you know, and the fact that she's being punished for it in this way is, is an interesting one. And it's, it's stuff like that that doesn't necessarily f fully go into the overall, like, oh, the 1% is terrible, um, that I think, you know, I, I like when, a, yeah, when they can kind of imbue different stuff like that, when they take the time, because they don't have but he, to. But, he, but for who he is, he blames her. Sure, yeah. You know? Yeah. And, I, and again, like, this is all chef's, like, the menu is the chef's menu. You know, it's, it's all script. It's all perfectly <laughs> curated, and the like, greed comes in many forms. I think, and even with the cup, the guy who lost his finger, uh, the the dude who was constantly cheating on his wife, you know. It's and I I like how this movie lets you kind of imagine a little bit of backstory with people versus telling you. Yeah, like Nicholas Holt, I kind of just filled that in. That's sort of what seems like it's in his performance mm -hmm. of spoiled rich kid, um, because this guy doesn't look like he's fucking earned anything. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. And then even with the old couple, I imagine like they, he was once not super successful, sure. And he probably grew in success with her, and then, nev and it wasn't good enough. Sure, like his relationship's not good enough. His wife's not good enough, so he starts seeking it elsewhere. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's I think it's a fun. It's a fun stuff happening here. It's a fun movie. Yeah, more fun. And Anya Taylor Joy is great as always. She's always good. Mm -hmm. Even. Yeah, I can't think of a time I thought she was bad. She's always been. No, she's. she's I've thought. I've think of times where she's been underused. <laughs> but yeah. I, I can't think of times where I'm like she's she sucks, and she's great again and uh, a perfect. I love how her, how her character unfolds, allowing, allowing the opening at the very end. Poor people win. A movie that was produced by people with money. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, I, I mean, like <laughs> my favorite favorite thing. I do often wonder, uh, like, yeah, it's like how big of a budget movie can you be? Like, this had to cost money for the stars anyway. And how much do you how much do you think about that when you sign on? You're like, I just read this great script about classism. Now, where's my million dollar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but too, like, I, I like that Anya Taylor Joy, even in being so, is not made out to be like the immaculate perfect saint poor girl she's just kind of like a real feeling person and she's the most sympathetic but the movie doesn't necessarily thrust her to you as like full-on 100 yeah. percent agreeable audience cipher character i mean even though she's like a hired escort as well she's not played like you're a whore you do what i want <laughs> you know? well yeah and it's like if you yeah. didn't if they didn't touch on that in the dialogue you could not even you you wouldn't necessarily have to even interpret it that way. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just like you got unlucky and you got swapped in. Probably this girl dumped this guy, and now you're here. <laughs> I mean, of everything we've said, the one thing we haven't said, which I'm so surprised we haven't said, is Ray Fiennes is fucking phenomenal. Oh yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> as a guy who's played that that guy's played so many villains by this point, and that was part of my lack of interest in watching this mm. was. Ray Fiennes is a villain again. Okay, sure. Uh, 
I, I'm like, <laughs> like I saw Saving Private Ryan for the first time recently. I'm like, hey, he's the villain. <laughs> and, and, really? Uh, and uh, you haven't seen Saving Private Ryan? No, I've seen Saving Private Ryan. I'm just, I thought you had seen it. Yeah. What? You said you saw Saving Not Private Ryan. Not Saving Private Ryan. Uh, <laughs> uh, Schindler's List. Schindler's List. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, yeah, yeah Schindler's yeah. List. And um, the and, and of course Voldemort and like the countless the other menu, movies. Harry. The Red, Red Dragon. <laughs> 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 the, the list comes on and on yeah. for Ray Fiennes as a villain. And I really love how he doesn't play it like he's having fun with his food here. He really plays it like a tortured soul and a guy who's like clinically lost his mind and is depressed. Yeah. <laughs> like he's a dude who's yeah. just really depressed. Who's resigned and, to this. Yeah, it's very it's a very solemn performance and uh with a smile that feels so put on versus um Labored. versus evil glee. What like there's he doesn't play it evil. And it was so cool to see him play it very human, like a full on character. And to bring something refreshing to a to a char- to a role that there's very many generic ways you could have done it, and and, and Ray Fiennes brings something so special here. And I think after so- decades, I'd say of playing villains, he manages to bring something very unique once again that doesn't feel repetitive or pulled from like I've seen Ray Fiennes do this before. Mm-hmm. Because as much as he's the villain, the furthest thing he does is play it as a villain. And I think that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Right down to the, the greatest game. Uh, that's, uh, that's another great meta- class as a metaphor. Oh, the, the, the most Let's dangerous have the rich game. Run. Yeah, the, the most dangerous game. Let's have the rich people run. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and that's, uh, I, I appreciate, too, that that could, that's an aspect of these movies where, yeah, like whoever's going to figure out the game, they have some kind of, eye to eye moment moment of mutual respect and i liked the way they drew that here because it did not at all feel hackneyed or like we just need this to happen because of the script like the way they played the connection and the in, like the curiosity between and then the ultimate not connection but just the way that they kind of see one another margo and and uh, and the chef I thought it was really nicely done too because that's an aspect that could easily become cliched or or read as you know, a contrivance, and I thought they made a nice, just, uh, they made nice out of that here. They made something kind of rich out of that here. And so when, it's like he doesn't get the redemption at the end, but it is like you you buy that last glimmer of like, you did beat me at my own game, and in the process you brought me something I never thought I would feel again, and now it almost gives his eventual death and completion of the menu sort of a a bit of relief. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's. I thought they made interesting stuff out of most every choice. Like, I think every turn when I thought it could rest on being just a fun, there's something often very fun about a, you know, dark satire. I feel like, I feel like often these kinds of movies come with a gleeful sort of energy to watch people be poked and prodded. And I thought that, that this movie actually didn't give in to that. And it's not always even a bad thing, but I'm glad they didn't. Here. Like there is a glee and there is a, a dark humor going on behind the camera, but it's so restrained that it lets the characters all just breathe as they are. And I think that's a, a tremendous asset to an experience like this. One million percent. I enjoyed it. Yep. Enjoyed it four to five. I would order it again. In fact, eat it on a rock locally sourced. All right, guys. Well, what did you think about the menu? Do you agree? Are you rich throwing your raw <laughs> steak at the menu, your, your HBO Max subscription? That's right. Your ad-free top-tier HBO Max subscription <laughs> <laughs> that you're watching on your solid gold iPad. Hey, let's shout out someone from our Patreon page. <laughs> Anisa Oliva. Anisa, I would like to cook for you. Ooh. You know what I would make you? Mm. I would first... Get a toaster. Then I would put two slices of bread in there. Oh. Then I'd slowly walk over to my cabinet whilst the bread is toasting. Private reserve bread. Pull out a jar of peanut butter. Mm -hmm. Open it. Put my fingers in. Taste it. Not wash my hands. Mm -hmm. Put that peanut my fingers back in that peanut butter. Spread it on the bread. 
Then I go back in the fridge. The saliva brings it together. Grab some mustard. Mm -hmm. Put my whole hand in the mustard jar. Sweet and tart. Lick my uh, whole hand. Mm -hmm. Put it on the other slice of bread. Then I fold those pieces of bread together. Look at that. That's a new invention. I'm out of knives. So Mm -hmm. I would tear it in half. Rip it. Now keep in mind, it's all toasty, so it's just going to like crumble everywhere. It's, it's going to melt it's on gonna the be, floor. It's going to be really messy. You're going to eat it off the floor. Then I drop it on the floor, and I say, eat this shit, Anissa. Lap it up. See, that's how we do it in Texas. <laughs> good, old, <laughs> good old floor witch. Good old peanut butter and mustard floor witch. Peanut butter mustard sandwich from the floor. Mm-hmm. From yours truly, Anissa. Yeah, that's passion. what I want to do for you in 2023. I think that's a manageable goal, honestly. <laughs> I'd fly to Texas just to watch you do that. Mm-hmm. And we'll bring the bread. <laughs> just bring the peanut Hell no. butter. Why am I wasting my bread of on Of course, Misa? of course. If you're going to make the trip your out there, bread. You, yeah, no, yeah, you, you're, with that. your no, no. bread. In fact, your you can get the plane bread. ticket, too. I'm not, I'm not buying the bread. Yeah, Chef Greg doesn't stoop it's to ridiculous. such levels. I'll bring the mustard from California. I'll fly over. I'll grind I gotta, the seeds myself. i got a half-eaten bottle of mustard already. <laughs> just um, bring it over in the plane. Mm. Sneak it onto my... Sneak it into your carry-on? Yeah, carry-on. Risk them taking it for being they too, mu- too big? You can't detect it. There's no ingredients in it. <laughs> it's an empty mustard bottle. It's been there for three years. It's not going <laughs> to... Oh, everything is just, you can't register it. It is a solid X-ray mustard. Now. <laughs> yeah. It is no longer a paste. It is a solid. We can heat it up when we get there, and then, yeah, be oh. perfect. I love you, Anissa. No, no, I'm just kidding. We'll take you to Denny's or some bullshit. We'll take you for a burger. All right. Love you. <laughs> On a real note, she got me a great wedding present. Thank you, Anissa. Oh, yeah. Anissa. Hey.